Hi everybody, thanks for joining us for another Facebook Live event. This morning, I want you guys to try to guess where we are. So I know a lot of you have been to a lot of the JDCF preserves, and this is probably one of the more visited preserves here. So take a look around me and see if you can recognize anything here. And uh, let me know, uh, type it into the comment section, try to guess where we are located this morning. It's one of my favorite places. So today I'm going to teach you guys how to use a map and compass to help navigate while you're out exploring the world. So uh, why would somebody want to use these skills? Uh, nowadays we have our smartphones with our Google Maps and um, that's usually what people use to help navigate where to go and find their destinations. So um, the reason you would want to use a map and compass is because what if your phone dies, the battery dies, or your, your device breaks? Um, in those situations, you're going to need to know how to use a map and compass in order to get to where you need to go. So um, this can come into play when you're just out hiking around in the wilderness area or it really is helpful and gives you peace of mind if you ever want to really go out to some wilderness area, maybe up northern uh, in the UP or out west somewhere. Uh, it gives you peace of mind of knowing um, how to find your way back home. So uh, the first thing I need to do in talking about map and compass skills is show you here's our fake compass here it's a really big one that i can show you kind of the parts of a compass and how they work and then i have my actual compass right here with our magnetic needle in it so it's important to know the parts of the compass because they're going to come into play here so our big uh clear plate here in the bottom is called the basal plate uh, this basal plate uh, is, well, I'll show you what to do with all the different things. So this is a basal plate. The red arrow here, this is your direction of travel arrow. And uh, we're going to call that direction of travel arrow Fred, because it's going to go along with a little saying that will help us remember what to do. So this is Fred, our direction travel arrow. And then we have our index line, which is back here behind the, um, the rotating dial so here's our index line back there and then the rotating dial here this is called a rotating bezel rotating bezel so you can see it has numbers on it from 0 to 360 there's 360 degrees in a circle and then also marked on here is n for north s for south east e for east and w for west so this is our rotating bezel and then we have our magnetic needle. Now this is just a fake compass, so this isn't actually magnetic, but in my real compass, this is a magnetic needle. And back behind the magnetic needle here is this red arrow there. This is very important. This uh, red arrow is called our orienting, uh, what is it called? Orienting arrow. So we're going to uh, use this arrow here and we're going to call it the shed shed and Fred rhyme and it goes along with a saying that I'll teach you in just a minute that will help us remember how to use a compass so this here kind of looks like a shed has a peak of a roof like a shed and straight walls like a shed this arrow we're gonna call a shed okay so now how do you use one of these things I'm gonna put my fake compass away and I will show you how to use a real compass so here's our real compass and um, I have it always have it around your neck like this right in front of you I'm going to take it off just so that um, Deb and I can keep a distance here while we show you how to work this and so this uh, this compass here you can see our magnetic needle when I turn it you can see the magnetic needle is always facing north and on the other end it's black so that's south and then here's our dial, our uh, rotating bezel. And you can see when I rotate this, the arrow on the bottom here rotates with it. 
So now when you have your uh, compass right here in front of you, it's important that your compass doesn't have anything metal around it. Like if you have a metal zipper or a metal belt buckle or something metal in your jacket, um, it's important that there's no metal anywhere near the compass. Otherwise, your, the magnetic needle will be thrown off. I've done this program with kids before and like a metal, metal bolt on a picnic table will really throw off your um, your compass. So there's nothing wrong with your compass. It's just you have to keep it away from metal. Um, so don't lay your map out on the car uh, hood because your hood is metal. So, <laughs> um, all right. So when you have your compass in front of you like this, uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to dial in your bearing. And now I'm just going to give you a bearing for now, and then I'll show you later how to find one. So I'm going to dial in my bearing. I want to put it at 40 degrees. So here I have rotating all the way to 40. There we go. So I'm lining 40 up with that index line underneath. Let me move this again so you can see that index line right there underneath. So let's line up 40 right on that index line. There we go. And then you uh, take your compass and you rotate. You're actually going to rotate your body, but just for now, so I can show you on the camera, that you rotate your compass so that red, the magnetic needle red, is inside the shed and then you follow Fred. So red in the shed and follow Fred. So let's try that. Now, when you have this compass here in front of you, you don't wanna just rotate your compass. You wanna rotate your body like this. So you rotate your whole body until red is in the shed and you wanna hold it as flat as possible. Red in the shed. So now I have my magnetic needle lined up with the shed, and then I can follow my direction of travel arrow, my Fred. So I like to stick my arm out right here in front of me, find a point on the horizon to walk towards. So it's very important to have an accurate, um, an accurate uh, point to walk towards. Um, it's more important to have that when you're traveling really long distances because then your margin of error will be, uh, you'll be way off from your ideal destination with a, uh, with a larger uh, margin of error. But if you're just gonna go a short distance, um, approximate is fine. So let's see, I've got 40 dialed in, picking my point. I can see a tree over here, right here in front of me. I'm just gonna, uh, use that as my point to walk towards. Now I can put my compass down. I don't need to follow it the whole time. Put my compass down and then you just walk towards your point right there. And let's say there's something in my way like a maybe there's a river or a really steep ravine or a tree. Then I can just walk around or walk over or swim across or whatever you need to do to get to that vantage point that you picked out way back at your other spot. So now I'm at my tree and uh, I, I'm going to dial in again, or I'm going to look at my compass again and find another 40. I'm gonna get on the other side of my tree though. Okay, so I still have 40 dialed in here. And now I rotate my body again to make sure red is in the shed. So there you go, oh, there's red in the shed. And then I follow Fred, which is this arrow. So I'm gonna put my arm out in front of me. Not everybody does this, but I do that. <laughs> so, okay, now I've picked out a point on the horizon. I can put my compass down and walk to my next spot. Now I won't get into the part where you count your paces because we don't have a lot of time to get into that. Um, but I'm at my next spot. Now, you keep doing this until you get to your destination. You can um, traverse the whole land and uh, map out different points of interest on, on the land. Um, you can, um, it'll help you get to wherever you need to get to. Let's say you're trying to get to like a parking lot where your car is on the edge of the wilderness. That's how you get there. Could you show people, um, let's just pick uh, which way would be west. 
Okay, so how do you figure out which direction is west? So you can look at your dial here and your dial actually has a little W on it. Uh, that indicates west and it's at 270 degrees when you think about a circle it's 270 so there we go there's west so you dial that in there and then you rotate your body so that red is in the shed so okay now my red is in the shed oh there we go red in the shed and I'm going to follow Fred, which is this arrow here, okay? So now this is straight west, okay? So that's how you find west. Now, how do you find east? Well, I don't really need to dial in east again, I could, but what I could do is just put the other end of the needle in the shed. So there's the black end of the needle in the shed Oh, there we go. And uh, then that tells me that this direction is straight east. And I can do the same for north and south also. So that's kind of a really general overview of how to use a compass. Now when you're out and about hiking around, you're probably not going to be given a bearing like a go 40 degrees in uh, 300 paces or something so how do you find your bearing I'm going to show you how to find your bearing on a map and um, I don't actually have a map of this specific place but um, for our purposes any map is fine because uh, it has the key parts that we're going to need to find a bearing um, so here's the map that I'll show you. There's a few things on a map that are really important. This one has topography lines, which is all these little lines that indicate the um, elevation changes. Uh, there's a road here in red. Uh, there's a legend here that shows what's what. And uh, this is actually a map that uh, of Wooded Wonderland it was used during a orienteering festival a few years ago. So I will show you how to use a bearing or how to t find your bearing here on this map. Let's say you know where you are on this map. It's important to know where you are. If you don't know where you are, you can look around you and see what kind of landmarks are around you to help find your location on the map. Maybe you're next to a stream with a with a very distinctive curve in it and you know okay there's a there's a distinctive curve on a stream on the map that might be where I am. Or maybe you're at the top of like one of the only peaks in the area. Maybe you're right by a building on the map or a road or an intersection. However you find your starting location that's kind of key for um, finding your bearings. So for our purposes, there's a little dot here. We're going to say that that is our starting point. That's where we are right now. Now, let's say we want to go just straight across here. There's a nice little creek here. Let's say we want to go check out that creek over there. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing you want to do is you draw a straight line from where you are to where you want to go. So let's just do that, just like that. And then you take your compass and you put your uh, center of your compass right there on your starting point. And you put your Fred, your direction of travel arrow, right in line with that line you just drew, right like that. And then you rotate your uh, rotating bezel so that uh, north on the map is in line with north on your rotating bezel. So if you can see that, also I should move this to a white piece of paper so you can see the lines underneath your map, underneath your um, compass here, vertical, right in line with that red arrow, your shed, that, those are the lines that you line up with your longitude lines on your map. So every map should have some longitude lines and this one definitely does. So that's good. 
So after you have that all lined up, just like that, then it's all dialed in. You can tell right here at the index line, it's dialed in. It looks like it's not quite straight west at 270. It looks like it's a little north of 270, so maybe 272, 274. Now you take your compass, it's all dialed in, and you do uh, what we were just doing there. You rotate your body until red is in the shed, and then you find your direction of travel. So in this case, there it is, red's in the shed, right like that. And then you find your direction of travel right straight ahead. And that's, and then you walk towards your vantage point. Once you get to that point, you find another vantage point, walk there, and, um, and we won't have time today to get into how to um, figure out how far you need to go. Maybe that can be a whole other session. <laughs> Um, but that gives you kind of the basics of how to use a map and compass. It's a really good skill to have if you are, um, if you're really looking to explore some wilderness areas um, and go up north or out west somewhere. This is a really good skill to have. I've, I've used this before even when I was, I was kayaking on a river in Iowa and I didn't know where exactly I was on a river, but I knew that there was a highway that ran the entire um, distance east and west just south of the river so I needed to exit the river because it was taking way longer than I expected and find that road so I just went straight south in order to uh, find that road and then from there I could figure out where I was going. So these are really good skills to have um, for all different kinds of situations so um, yeah, if anybody has any questions about how to do this uh, or f stories of times where you've needed to use these skills, those are always good stories to share. Um, they're learning opportunities for everybody. So uh, thanks guys for joining our Facebook Live event. If you have questions for us, just type them into the comments section. I want to thank our sponsors, the First Community Bank of Galena, Apple River State Bank. Thanks for sponsoring our educational opportunities like this. And we will see you guys next week.